Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel for this week's safety recap. Before we get started, make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, toolbox safety topic videos, and leadership training videos. And if you find this information useful or helpful, make sure you share it with your colleagues and coworkers. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this week's safety recap. Thanks to all who welcomed me onto their job sites this past week. Safety is at the pinnacle of priorities. Spirits are high and productivity is second to none. Keep up the good work and continue to be the example that others wish to emulate. Now there were a couple of safety items noted and I will cover them after a few words about system induced accountability. I recently read an article in Forbes magazine by Henry Browning entitled Seven Ways to Build Accountable Organizations and I'd like to share it with you. Don't you love that employee who goes above and beyond? She takes responsibility, shows initiative, and really owns her projects, processes, and problems. Somewhere along the line, she learned that good things happen when you're accountable, but it's largely up to you, her boss, to be sure she doesn't have a change of heart. But you say, accountability is intrinsic, you can't force people to be accountable. True, but we learn from the people around us. When the work environment is designed for accountability, it will flourish. When it's not, you'll get sterile work from a few people until they stop making the effort or leave for another job. An accountable workplace won't appear overnight, but the right elements must be in place. Where do you need to invest your time and attention to build an environment of accountability? Number one, clear roles. Team leadership and individual ownership. People struggle to be accountable when roles and processes are ambiguous. Removing as much confusion as possible about who is doing what and how they will proceed is an important step. If a team is truly accountable, Members will identify gaps, learn new roles and processes, and ultimately build a more capable team. Number two, a sense of ownership for team results. How does team accountability work? Focus on team processes. How is the team working toward goals and outcome? Are team members effective? Do they feel 100% accountable to improving the process? Each member should have an obligation to seek information, give and receive feedback, and point out the need for corrective action at any time. Number three, freedom, support, and control to navigate competing priorities. Most problems have multiple right answers. So, give people the freedom and control they need to make decisions. The first solutions your team and direct ports come up with will probably be pretty good. Improve upon them instead of inserting your own. Support is the key. Be sure people have the resources, knowledge, and assistance they need. With this approach, team members increase their skills, confidence, and ownership. Number four, it's not about punishment. If your goal in fostering accountability is to know who to punish when revenue targets are not met or budgets are missed, you will only succeed in creating fear. No one will be willing to step up, speak out, or try something new. Innovation and risk-taking will be lost. Once the rumor mill of an organization circulates a story about someone stepping out and being punished, hundreds, even thousands of other employees will be skittish about taking initiative to find solutions. Number five, it's about improvement. Accountability is the foundation for creating a learning organization. 
If you want sustainable, high-quality processes, you need to be able to see what's working and what isn't and analyze the cause. To that end, each person needs to be honest, say what they knew, what they thought, and what they did or didn't do. One important thing you can do to support a learning atmosphere is to take a system approach as well as holding individuals accountable. Seek to understand what aspects of the situation have influenced the process, system, culture, or circumstances. Number six, the expectation of evaluation. In accountable organizations, no one expects to stay under the radar. In fact, people send feedback because they know it is intended to improve the process and add to their knowledge. These organizations use multiple forms of feedback and evaluation to assess the health and success of a manager, process, or department. Organizations lacking multiple feedback mechanisms only discover shortcomings when it is too late. And finally, number seven, integrity counts. People are called out if they don't do what they say they will do. When anyone falls short, they admit it and work to improve. Someone consistently falling short, a sure sign of low commitment and a clue that something is missing in your culture of accountability. On with the recap. Let's talk about respirators. Respirator care. Respirators, when not in use, are to be stored in a sanitary condition, such as in a dirt, dust-free environment, such as a bag or other suitable container. Respirators should be cleaned and sanitized on a regular basis. Respirators should all be, also be stored out of direct sunlight and in a way not to become deformed. And finally, face protection. Employers shall ensure that each affected employee uses appropriate eye or face protection when exposed to eye or face hazards from flying particles, molten metals, liquid chemicals, acids or caustic liquids, chemical gases or vapors, or potentially injurious light radiation. Examples might include grinding, torching, concrete chipping, etc. All right, boys and girls, that's it for this week's safety recap. Thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching. Make sure that you give me a thumbs up down below here to encourage me to make more videos of this type. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will find additional videos of this nature, toolbox safety topic videos, and leadership training videos. And if you find this information useful or helpful, make sure you share it with your friends or colleagues. And until we see each other again, take care of yourself because you're number one. Look out for your coworkers and help ensure their safety. Have a grateful day. And remember, I will see you in the field. All right, I had a little frog in my voice there, uh, but I struggled through. Uh, listen, uh, this, uh, this uh, Mr. Henry Browning, uh, it was a pretty good article, and accountability is important. Uh, we hold each other accountable. We hold our coworkers accountable. We hold uh, uh, our customers accountable. We do this through a process of, of documentation, uh, but the very first step is holding yourself accountable. Uh, do what you say you're going to do and make sure you follow through. Uh, anyway, remember remember that these uh, videos can be used to train your people. Uh, take, take a sign-in sheet, reference the, the video you're watching. It could be this video. I've got several other videos out there. Other people have videos out there. Show the video, have some sort of discussion, 
have your employees sign off that they it's signifying that they had watched the video and that becomes a document to uh that you can submit to osha and to document and prove that you do continuing education on uh, hazard recognition and hazard mitigation uh on your with your team on your job site for your company uh anyway if you watch to the very end here i'll put in some more of those easter eggs and uh you can tell me what you think so thanks for watching have a grateful day and i will see you in the field stop recording Thank you.